And we're on the air again. It's March 16th. It's a Tuesday. It's a new stuff. Here we go. Power Series. What is a Power Series? Well, here's an example of a Power Series. You ready? I don't know. Hold on to your hats. Here we go. So let's say I gave you sigma, right? It looks like a normal series, doesn't it? As k goes from 1 to infinity, right? Still looks like a normal series, doesn't it? Yeah, but now it's not. Okay, so it's not a series of constants, a bunch of numbers like a half plus a third plus a fourth, right? It's not that. It's a series of power functions. We're going to add up a bunch of power functions. Well, so tell me, what do you get? Plug in one. X plus X squared plus X cubed plus and so forth, right? Now the idea is that if this series converges, remember series last week of constants? Sometimes it converged, sometimes it didn't, right? and they converge to a number. Now, if a power series converges, it converges to a function. Okay, and what's nice about this is if it converges to a function that's hard to integrate, th or differentiate for that matter, this is easy. Because it's just power, power rule all over the place if you want to integrate. Okay, now the thing is though, we ha there's an issue of convergence. Does it converge or not? If it converges, what does it converge to? What's the function? Um, also, how good is your estimate? Because this only converges if you add up infinitely many terms, right? It goes up to infinity. But you can't do that. So if you truncate it to three terms, four terms, five terms, how bad is the error if you're trying to estimate answers using it, like the area under a curve, like an, a, a definite integral or something? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Assuming it converges to a function. And by the way, this does converge to a function, and you know what it is right now. Because isn't this a geometric series? What makes a series geometric? Whatever the first term is, you get the next one by multiplying by a common ratio. And the next one by multiplying by the same thing. That's why it's common, the common ratio. What am I multiplying by to get here? What am I multiplying to get here? Is it the same thing? Yeah. So remember when we had, um, uh, what was it, geometric series? A, R to the N, N starts at zero. So the first term was a, and then was a times r, then was a plus times r squared, and blah, 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 blah. Remember, first term over 1 minus the common ratio is what it converges to if it's geometric, only if the common ratio in absolute value is less than 1, right? All right, compare this to this. Who's a? A is the first term. What is it? X. And you told me the common ratio was, I'm multiplying by R, multiplying by R, multiplying by R, multiplying by what? Okay. So this is A over 1 minus R. This thing, if you add up infinitely many terms, is this function. Okay. Except there's an interval of convergence. As long as R in absolute value is less than 1. But remember, R was X, right? As long as X in absolute value is less than 1. Otherwise, it blows up. So if you plug in numbers less than 1 in absolute value, like a half, this will work. If you plug in numbers bigger than 1, like 2, this won't work. 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 blows up, right? But what's nice here is now you have really infinitely many series of constants, like the series we had last week, where x can be any number between what? Well, what numbers are allowed then? Between what and what? If the absolute value of x is less than 1, what are the x values? What's the interval of convergence? What's the domain here? Can you plug in zero? Yeah. Can you plug in one? Is one less than one? No. Can you plug in negative one? No. Can you plug in two? Can you plug in negative two? Can you plug in a half? Can you plug in negative a half? All right, so what are the numbers I'm getting? Between what and what? Not zero and negative 1 and 1, right? That, this is the same th interval right here. All right? This is an example of a Maclaurin series. A Maclaurin power series. All right, Maclaurin power series are always good at 0. Does this work at 0? If I plug in 0, does it work? Yeah. Or near 0, like this one, 
or for all real numbers, x. Okay? A Maclaurin series is a series in powers of x where the interval convergence is centered at 0. Yeah? No, because it's to the k's. The k is never 0. Right? So it's k to the 1, to the 2, to the 3. So you don't get 0 to 0. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying whatever, yeah, this one, right, but I'm saying the point is the first term is A, whatever it is, and the next term is times R, right, so, yeah, that's not really an issue here. Um, all right, so, what do we know about Maclaurin series? Already we know several things about Maclaurin series. Maclaurin series can be written, um, let's see. All right, this is a Maclaurin series in general. It will always look like this. Sigma, k goes from 0 to infinity. Uh, c sub x, c sub k, x to the k. Okay, that's the general form. It's not just x plus x squared plus x cubed plus whatever. It could be some function in front, some constants in front. So it could be like, um, I don't know, c0 x times x to the 0 plus c1 times x to the 1 plus c2 times x to the 2, plus c3, okay? So some constant, plus some constant times x, plus some constant times x squared. That, that's typically what a Maclaurin looks like. That's sort of like what we got here. All the constants in front were 1, okay? So c1 is 1, c2 is 1, and this constant was 0. So this is a general form for Maclaurin. What's nice about Maclaurin is it converges... only at x equals 0 or near x equals 0. So x is between two values, let's say negative r and r, or for all real numbers. Let's write it this way. OK? Now, what's R? R is the radius of conver convergence. What's zero? The center. All right? So on this interval of convergence, what's the center? Zero. zero. What's the radius? One. One. Okay? All right, so all Maclaurin series will be centered at zero. They're best at zero. And they converge for usually for more than that, for at least a certain uh, finite radius about zero, or for every real number. Now, those are nice. The power series that converge for all real numbers, they're nice. But remember, that's only true if you add up infinitely many terms. So if you don't, it's still going to be something like this. The interval convergence will not be f infinite, it will be finite, if you take finitely many terms. Okay, now this is very convenient. Now look, is that true? Let's graph this thing. Let's see what this thing looks like. Let's see what this thing looks like. And see that this looks like this only for these x's. Okay, here we go. Let's go to Hal. And I'm going to compare this function up. Oh, I guess I'm in sequence mode, so I'm going to change my mode to function mode. Okay, let's go into y equals. And let's just graph x over, whoops, enter, x over 1 minus x. Okay, let's just assume for that for now. And of course, it has a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. So I have to find it at x equals 1, right? OK, now what does this series look like? Well, let's see. If I add on one term, notice that's a linear function. Isn't that like mx plus b, where m is 1 and b is 0? That's a linear approximation. That's probably the tangent line at 0. Let's see about that. See the tangent line? OK, now. Tangent line approximations are very good near zero because of local linearization. Remember local linearization? If you blow up a curve, a continuous curve enough, eventually it looks a lot like it's tangent line. So near the point of tangency, the, the values on the tangent line, the y values on the tangent line, are very close to the y values of the function, so we use tangent line approximations sometimes. All right, but what if we make the approximation better? Let's add on another term. Whoops. Where it happened to my x? What happened to my... What is going on with the keyboard here? It's skipping. Hang on. Boom. Okay. All 
All right, so now we're going to get some curvature here. Okay, let's see. So that's the original function. And here's my estimate to that function. All right, so now it's a parabolic estimate. And if you blow this up near zero sufficiently much, you're going to find that the y values of the parabola are closer to the y values of the curve for more values of x than the line. Okay, let's add on some more curvature. Whoops. The next term was x cubed, right? All right, so add on another term. And here's the function we're appro approximating. And here's our Maclaurin, finite Maclaurin series, only three terms. And notice how before the parabola was approaching from above, 